What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of building a hybrid turbo rotary BMW i8. Today we're going to take a look at attaching the high voltage starter generator to the motor, installing the inverter in the subframe, as well as looking at the motor mounts and my downpipe as the room for activities that we started out with are filling up pretty quick. Before we get into the details, we need to tear down the assembly behind me because the engine within is just a 3D printed plastic version of a 13B. One of the first areas that we're going to take a look at is the clearance of the downpipe to the transmission case. This had to be pretty tight in order to get the outlet of the downpipe to line up in a reasonable manner with the inlet of the exhaust. And to achieve this, we used a familiar friend of 3D metal printing where today's sponsor, JLC 3DP, provided a 316 stainless steel 3D printed downpipe. JLC 3DP offers advanced 3D printing services and their streamlined online platform allows for easy upload of 3D models, instant quotes, and real-time order tracking. From material selection to speedy delivery of the final products, they meticulously manage every step with production times as fast as 24 hours and delivery within just two days. Join JLC 3DP's third anniversary event where new users get free 3D prototyping. Check out the link via the QR code or the description below. The downpipe was printed in the equivalent thickness of 14 gauge and it had the V-man flange and the O2 sensor bung printed in place with the only post-processing to be run a tap through it to cut the threads for the O2 sensor. Now that we know that clears, let's move on to how we're going to install the starter generator system onto the 13B. The driveline layout of the i8 not only has a traction motor sending power to the front wheels, but it also has another smaller high voltage motor bolted to the internal combustion engine. This acts as a starter, it acts as a generator to put power back into the high voltage battery, or acts as an electric supercharger to help supplement the torque of the internal combustion motor. I designed the system as such that the factory starter generator will bolt to the 13B in almost the exact location that it was from the factory. Test fitting the hybrid components introduced a little bit of a complication as my parts are still installed on the car that I'm still driving today and I didn't really want to go and spend about $1,000 on parts where I already have good working versions that I can use down the road. I recently bought a spare set of engine harnesses to use for donor connectors as well as to hack up for breakout harnesses to do some testing and as it turned out the eBay store that I purchased them from happened to have the two high voltage components in question that I needed. And here's where I got to give a huge thanks to the guys down at Parts Hub Philadelphia for not only having some really fun branding, but for loaning me the starter generator and the inverter so that I could 3D scan them, as well as do some physical mock-ups in my subframe. This was a huge help in moving the project along and I really appreciate the support. As a side note, the engine harness that I bought had zero broken connectors and zero cut wires, which I'm pretty sure is a first for me on used engine harnesses. So if you guys need any gently used European auto parts, definitely check them out and I will link to their eBay store in the description. I used two different scanners for this job, one being the classic Einstar that I've done most of my scans with. However, I did use the new Vega in HD mode to capture the pulley. You can see the much higher detail of the ribs with the Vega scan, and these were used to align the generator assembly with the crank pulley in order to build the bracket. 
We do need to make one design departure from the factory layout, and that is a reduced diameter drive pulley to limit the speed of the electric motor. The factory B38 spins to a pretty pathetic 6400 RPM, and we're going to be turning the rotary to a max of about 8500 RPM. While we can spin a rotary much higher, it is a turbo motor, so we don't really need to spin it to the moon. Reducing the diameter of the drive pulley is going to have an added side benefit because the starter generator is going to spin at its factory intended RPM, which is going to translate to a higher cranking speed of the 13B and hopefully help get it fired off a little bit quicker. In order to properly test fit the clearance between the pulley and the inverter, we needed to semi-assemble the 13B by stacking all the plates together and installing the E-shaft with the end plate set correctly. This way we could torque everything down and ensure that the clearance from the face of the pulley was actually representative of its final installation location. The generator bracket has some basic tabs and slots to locate all the components so everything clicks together. We did run into a small problem where there was either an error in the position of the model or I was overly ambitious with the bend stack up and the holes at the top of the bracket didn't line up. I decided that the best course of action would be to hack them off and then see how much flex the bracket might have after it's all assembled. With the modified bracket, everything bolted up into place as designed. One irritating aspect of any accessory drive design is figuring out the right belt size as belt math never seems to math correctly for me. And after a little bit of trial and error, I arrived at some factory part off of a Land Rover which was a stocking item at FCP Euro, which is conveniently a 15 minute drive down the road for me. This high voltage motor also has a pretty interesting pendulum tensioner setup where it can maintain tension on the belt whether it's driving in either direction. Here with the tensioner in its locked back position you can see an exaggerated example of the motion that it would see under tension. With the dial indicator in place, we had about 0.2 millimeters or about eight thousandths of an inch worth of flex, but I want to make that number as close to zero as possible. The solution is going to be to add a secondary bracket that's going to pick up off another bolt hole and then get welded to the primary bracket. So that's really all there is to it from a mechanical standpoint of attaching the high voltage components to the 13B. It was just a simple matter of creating a bracket for the generator and a custom eight rib crank pulley that I'm gonna have to get machined out of aluminum because the 3D printed nylon is not gonna hold up to actual use. The BMW generator is really just a compact three phase AC induction motor that could be easily adapted to any other motor using the same process of a custom bracket and a custom pulley and then have your own DIY hybrid system when paired with another inverter that has aftermarket open source control and then have on demand torque fill to supplement turbo spool or any other situation like that. There's quite a few hybrids on the market today that have a small three to 400 volt battery pack that could fit in the trunk in about the same amount of space as a fuel cell. So it's a fairly straightforward integration. Now that we have the high voltage components located, let's take a look at the motor mounts. I originally intended to use all three of the factory subframe mounting locations and I was successful in two out of those three instances. 
The first mount that we'll take a look at is where the transmission bolts to the side of the subframe. Looking at the tab and slot in the bracket, you might think this is installed crooked, but this is actually because the transmission is rotated two degrees to gain a little bit more clearance for the axle. As you can see that this mock-up Schedule 40 piece is pretty close to the turbo manifold. a flat plate that bolts the subframe with a small bent cradle that holds a universal GM rubber transmission mount that interfaces with a half inch aluminum plate that then bolts the transmission. All of this allows the mount to remain in place while the transmission can be unbolted and then just drop straight out the bottom. On the front mount, the factory setup used a bit of a dog bone link that attached to the factory oil pan. In this case, we're not going to attach to the oil pan, but instead the side of the 13B front plate. To interface with the aluminum bracket that goes on the car, which also bolts to the under tray, I designed a small cradle that interfaces with the rubber mount and then attaches to the stainless bent mount that goes to the side of the engine block. The third didn't work out so well and my test mock-up piece failed about halfway through its 3D print process and I'm glad it did so I didn't waste any more filament. My initial design for the front motor mount would have been hogged out of a giant piece of aluminum interfaced with the top of the front plate, had some AN threads for the coolant ports and then attached to the factory mounting point on the subframe. In reality, it took up way too much space and would have been extremely detrimental to future serviceability. The alternative was a much more reasonable laser cut and bent part, but that did provide the complication of figuring out where to attach to the subframe. The motor side of the rear motor mount bolts to the transmission where the all-wheel drive transfer case used to sit in the RS3. I also included a smaller secondary bolt pattern and that's going to contain the seal housing to keep all of the fluid inside of the transmission. I may actually add an additional bearing to there for support, but we'll see whether that's actually needed. The rubber mounts are a factory BMW E30 part number. They were probably also using E28 and a bunch of other cars of that era. I typically prefer to use rubber mounts as polyurethane and aluminum suck on a street car. You can fight me in the comments on that topic, but this is gonna create a much more enjoyable driving experience and limit noise and vibration because this isn't a race car at the end of the day. All of the mounts throughout this, as well as the starter generator, were done in laser cut and bent quarter inch stainless steel. Stainless steel is probably a little bit overkill, but I live in close proximity to salt water, and even if I paint it, it will inevitably get scratched, and this is gonna prevent any corrosion down the road. This does introduce an additional problem, though, of galvanic corrosion, so anywhere that any raw stainless is gonna be touching the aluminum, we need to make some small spacer gasket, probably one or two layers of printed nylon or TPU, and this is just to keep the two metals from reacting with each other. For what's now the rear motor mount, we came up with a system similar to what BMW did on the front motor mount, and that's going to provide a nice rigid mounting point that's not going to collapse the aluminum frame rail. So what we're doing on the rear motor mount is replicating really what BMW did in the factory here by having some aluminum sleeves that go all the way through the subframe and then prevent the tube from being crushed. And I didn't really want to weld to the subframe, so I have an aluminum plate that we're going to weld our spacers into. That will then go against the subframe and then everything will bolt together on top of that. First step was to clamp the mount into position on the subframe, then scribe a line to mark the location. Machine a set of aluminum spacers with a shoulder to keep it from getting pulled through the plate and the frame rail. I 3D printed a drill fixer to make sure that the holes aligned and that the drill went straight through both sides of the frame rail. 
Due to clearance, I was only able to tap one hole from the engine side. Then I flipped the drill fixture around to finish off the holes on the outer side. Resize all the holes accordingly with the step drill bit. Inserted our anti-crush plate into the subframe. Tack welded the spacers into place and then finished them off on the bench. That wraps up our rear motor mount to subframe integration. That covers all the motor mounts, except for having to get a little creative where we attach the rear mount to the subframe. Everything was pretty straightforward, and now the motor is completely supported under its own weight, and then we can tear everything out again to look at building the motor. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Next time, we're gonna take a look at some basic electronics design, reverse engineering a very simple LIN bus system, as well as getting CAN data out of the car and into a digital dash display. We'll see you next time.